Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be talking about how to shrink thyroid nodules. And this is important because so many patients end up with thyroid nodules, which we'll talk about in just a second. And the conventional way of looking at thyroid nodules is just to wait and see, which again, we'll talk about that in a little more detail as well. So if you have a thyroid nodule, you want to do your best to try and shrink that nodule. I've got some helpful tips that may be beneficial. Let's jump in first by talking about some thyroid nodule basics. So what you need to know is that thyroid nodules are very common, as I alluded to previously. In fact, when we're looking at percentages, it's about 65 or up to 65% of the population has a thyroid nodule, and that number is even higher by the time as you get older and older. So by the time we look at autopsies of people that have passed away, we see a really high percentage of thyroid nodules in these people. So we know they're very common. Now luckily, even though they're very common, 95% of the time those thyroid nodules are completely benign, meaning they don't cause any problems, they just sort of sit there and do nothing. However, 5% of the time they may be cancerous. And that's really the concern here. Well, you don't wanna be sitting with something inside of your body that has the potential to turn cancerous. And I should point out also, by the way, that thyroid nodules that start out benign can eventually turn into cancer, which is why you do wanna keep an eye on them, and it's, which is also why you should try to do something about them if you have one. You should also be aware that thyroid nodules typically do not cause any problems with thyroid function. So what that means is that you know that hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism are states of thyroid dysfunction that can occur because of thyroid gland problems. Most of the time, thyroid nodules do not disrupt that function. So most of the time, they're just sort of hanging out there. They may protrude out, you may see them, and they're really just a risk because they can turn into cancer, not because they're disrupting thyroid function. Now, how do you tell if you have a thyroid nodule? Now, most of the time, these are found um, through palpation or through physical exam. So if you go into the doctor, your doctor will do an exam of the thyroid and they may feel a, a bump or a nodule or see something that looks funny and then follow up with an ultrasound and diagnose you with a thyroid nodule. The problem with these self exams, which by the way, you can actually do right now if you know where your thyroid is. So your thyroid sits up at the base of your neck, right about right here. So you can actually feel your thyroid gland and see if there's something bumpy in there or something that doesn't feel even with the rest of your tissues. This isn't the best way to test for a thyroid nodule, but it is an easy way, so I do recommend considering it out. However, don't press too hard on your thyroid because you may cause issues. Um, the, the problem with this approach is that your thyroid is a three-dimensional structure. And so if you can imagine for a second, if the nodule's on the front, you can actually feel it because it's, you know, it's laying against your neck and you can kind of poke it. But if, you're, if you flip that thyroid around and the nodule's on the other side, you won't necessarily be able to feel it unless it's really big and then it pushes it outward. So physical exam is important because it's super easy to do, but you may need further testing to assess if you have a nodule that's hidden on the backside of your thyroid gland. And if that's the case, what you can do is you can check it with a thyroid ultrasound, but also thyroid nodules are occasionally found with CTs or MRIs. But the, the number one most important test if you wanna actually look at the size of the thyroid nodule is through ultrasound. And that's because the radiologist who looks at the thyroid nodule can get an idea and they can look at certain signs and if those signs are present, that increases the risk of that nodule being cancerous. So look to ultrasound if you are concerned. Now, what is the standard advice for most uh, thyroid patients from the conventional side of things? If you were to go to your endocrinologist or go to your family practice doctor, what would they recommend? Well, not much actually. There's really no, let's say, quote unquote, treatments for thyroid nodules from their side. In fact, all that they do is they recommend, hey, let's keep an eye on it, let's monitor it, and let's keep, and, and if necessary, if it shows funny signing, findings, or if it gets bigger, or if the ultrasound looks funny, then let's get a biopsy, and then if that biopsy is, shows that it's cancerous, let's pull it out. Now that's a problem because that doesn't sit well for a lot of thyroid patients, or not thyroid patients, but patients who have thyroid nodules. People don't like the idea of sitting with something inside of their body that may turn cancerous and doing absolutely nothing about it, which is why we're gonna talk about six things that have the potential to help. But you should know this before we talk about these treatments, and that is thyroid nodules are not always responsive to natural treatments or treatments in general. However, even though that's the case, 
in my opinion, it's always worth, worth it to try because the alternative is to do nothing, and why would you do nothing? And as we talk about some of these treatments, you'll see that they're actually quite good. So you can see that, here, let me get, bring those back. These treatments are actually going to help your body feel healthier in general, so there's really no reason not to do them. Number one, you wanna keep your TSH healthy and optimal. And really what we're concerned about here is a TSH that is too high because a high TSH means that you have higher levels of stimulation heating your thyroid gland. TSH stands for thyroid stimulating hormone and its entire purpose is to stimulate the production of thyroid hormone. But you can kind of also think about it as a growth hormone to cells that aren't really doing what they're supposed to. So the higher level of TSH, the higher the stimulation on those cells, the more likely a nodule is to both uh, be created and then also if it's already present to grow larger or to turn cancerous. So keeping your TSH in the 0.5 to 1.0 range is the ideal range that you should be shooting for. And you can do that by either taking thyroid medications if you need to, because that will bring your TSH down, or by using natural therapies, supplements, diet, lifestyle, etc., that can also optimize and normalize your TSH. Number two, you want to control your iodine intake. So that's number two that we're gonna be talking about right here. And that's because both high iodine and low iodine states have been associated with the creation or the production of thyroid nodules. For most people, what that means is you wanna find that Goldilocks zone, which is about 150 to 300 micrograms of iodine taken every single day. Now, what you'll find is a lot of people will be taking doses that are either much higher than that, sometimes 12.5 milligrams or higher, and then you'll have other people who will say completely avoid iodine. That's not, you don't really wanna do either of those. You wanna find that Goldilocks zone, 150 to 300 micrograms per day, which is the physiologic range. It's the range that your body needs to produce thyroid hormone adequately and stick to that from all sources. Now, yes, you may need to do some digging to see where all the iodine that you're getting every single day is coming from. You might find that some's coming from your beauty products, you might find that some's coming from supplements, and then you also might find that some's coming from food or maybe even medications. But take stock of all of those sources and make sure it's no, no, no more or no less than 150 to 300 micrograms. Number three, you wanna make sure that your immune system is healthy. And that's because uh, a dysregulated immune system is associated with the autoimmune thyroid condition, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And we also know that inflammatory states inside of the thyroid gland increase your risk for developing thyroid nodules. So what you can do is you can optimize your immune system, treat Hashimoto's, and prevent it from damaging your thyroid, and then the, the consequent production of thyroid nodules, or the creation, I should say. So you can check for Hashimoto's by ordering certain lab tests like thyroid globulin antibodies and thyroid peroxidase antibodies, and if they are present, use therapies to try and reduce those antibodies. I have videos that talk about this in much more detail, including therapies and treatments and diets and so on that can help you reduce your thyroid antibodies if they are present. But you do need to be aware that most cases of hypothyroidism are caused by the autoimmune disease Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and that condition does increase your risk for developing thyroid nodules. And I should point out thyroid cancer as well for the same reason. Number four, there is a connection between blood sugar and insulin resistance and the development of thyroid nodules. So if you have either high blood sugar or insulin resistance, you, can, you should do, take steps to reduce both of those. So reduce your blood sugar, reduce your uh, insulin resistance, treat diabetes if it's present, and that will reduce your risk and may actually help shrink thyroid nodules if they're present. Now you can do that in a variety of ways. I'd recommend focusing on a complete change in your lifestyle. So you might need to reduce your carbohydrate intake. You might need to take certain medications. You might need to take supplements. Um, keto and carnivore are particularly effective at reducing uh, um, blood sugar levels and insulin resistance. So that might be something to look into, but there are also plenty of other ways to do that. You can actually reduce insulin resistance by eating more fruits and vegetables as well. So don't fall into the trap that you have to do one or the other. Experiment and figure out what works best for you. Number five, make sure you are avoiding unnecessary radiation, especially when you're getting tested with things like x-rays and especially at places that are like the dentist's office. So if you are going to get a imaging for any reason, make sure that if it's of your head and neck that you protect your thyroid gland with lead. That lead barrier will, re will reduce the radiation that hits your thyroid gland and will ultimately protect it. Now there are lots of 
other reasons that you might be exposed to radiation, they're usually too low that they don't matter. And that might include sleeping next to a person, consuming certain foods like bananas, or even going on airplane rides. Those do expose you to some radiation, but typically not enough to cause those problems. But the thyroid gland is very sensitive to even small amounts of radiation, and little bits of radiation can damage the thyroid gland and then result in thyroid nodules and other problems as well. Lastly, eat lots of fruit and vegetables. We see that diet does have an impact on your risk of developing a thyroid nodule. As I stated before, with the connection between thyroid nodules and insulin resistance, which again, you can impact insulin resistance through the foods that you eat. And we also know from other studies that people who eat high amounts of fruits and vegetables have lo a lower incidence of thyroid nodules, probably due to the, the effects of this, the diet has on inflammation, probably the, the effects that the diet has on um, issues like insulin resistance and blood sugar. There's a lot of different reasons, but eating a healthy diet, which is replete in a lot of fruits and vegetables has been shown to be effective. So if you have a thyroid nodule, make sure that you are doing these six treatments or at least paying attention to them because it'll give you the best possible chance you have at shrinking your thyroid nodule if it's present. In addition, you might find that your thyroid nodule is a little more advanced. And if you're worried about the signs and symptoms that may indicate your thyroid nodule is cancerous, I'd recommend checking out this video next.